One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, you can't see them. But down on that hedge line there, there are seven hen pheasants wandering around in the hedge. Afternoon world, welcome to Sunday the 17th of January 2021. Um, nothing terribly exciting is going on today, so far. Right, I've done all my jobs around the farm this morning, not that there was much to do. Um, this afternoon I'll have to go back and do some feeding because tomorrow I'm meeting with the flag man, the Farming and Wildlife Advisory Group uh, man at the, uh, the farm uh, to talk about water. Uh, the Environment Agency and FWAG and whatever government agencies are involved want to talk to us about one of the major water courses that goes through our land. Uh, and I think the gist of the conversation as I get it is that they want to slow the water going across our land, which is an issue to me, because if anything, I want to speed up the water. I want it gone. So it could be an interesting conversation that I don't think I could take the camera to. I think this is just something that we're going to have to have a thrash out and we'll see what the outcome is and maybe I'll have a discussion or say to you guys what they want, what we may or may not agree to as far as... Um... What are you doing? You're jumping the red light. What a knob. Everybody's jumping the red light. Okay. That means I'm a knob too then. Okay. They obviously know something I don't. That's red too. Are both sets of lights stuck on red? If they are, then I'm less of a knob. Yeah. Where was I? Okay, so yeah, so tomorrow, um, not sure how much I could do as far as videoing tomorrow because of what we're doing. And I've also got legal stuff to get done as well in the afternoon, which is also not somewhere I can turn the camera. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday's video might be a bit sparse of stuff. Mind you, today's video is a bit sparse of stuff because, well, it's Sunday. I've done my jobs. I've got a few more bits and bobs to do. But it's kind of not a lot. Which brings me on to the conversation we need to have. Um, we went back into lockdown again, so I reverted back to doing daily uploads. Now, as I expect a lot of you can imagine, the daily uploads are quite a lot of work to fit in around my other jobs. Um, not impossible, but quite a lot of work. The problem is, is a lot of my work is routine stuff. It's I do the same today as I did yesterday and I'll do the same tomorrow. So there's only so many times I can show you me doing the same thing until it becomes dull. Uh, there are things we want to do, but the weather's preventing us, or COVID is pre pre preventing us, or something else may be preventing us. Um, so the question I want to ask is, should I carry on doing the daily uploads? I know a lot of you enjoy it, um, I get lots of messages or thanking me for the daily uploads, but to me, it feels like it's becoming a bit stale because I, I can't do anything different. It's not like I can even take the camera to um, one of our local historical attractions or um, some of our paths or whatever else. There's very little I can share without breaking the rules that the government have put down for COVID prevention. You know, preventing spreading this disease. So my hands are tied a bit with what I can do for you, or even for me. So what do you reckon? Um, you can comment in the section below, should I go back to just a couple of videos a week and try and get a bit more interesting content in them, or shall I continue 
just uploading the daily routine because in some ways I suppose it is real uh, there will be those folks out there who think farming is exciting and something new every day when in reality it's kind of not it's there are seasonal jobs there are things that you know I can't do now that we do do in the summer like I'm not going to harvest wheat tomorrow wheat tomorrow but um, it's seasonal jobs and once you get into the routine of the season it's kind of the same so not like I got lots of big shiny tractors to show you and you know exciting stuff like that so there you are that's the question I'm posing to you guys today is should I continue with the daily stuff or should I quit while I'm just about ahead and go back to three, three or two or three a week think on it let me know right so I am on my way over to Tiddington to see my dad it is Sunday so every Sunday since my mum um, had to go into hospice uh, which is somewhere we didn't want to put her but it's kind of right this minute again with Covid and everything else has gone on we've decided although we don't like it probably the safest place for her right now um, but my dad's on his own so every I promised him that if mother went into um, care or whatever else that we would take him a Sunday lunch every Sunday we'll take him lunch so whatever I have for Sunday lunch we always have a roast usually have a roast um, I'll take him on over so uh, I don't have anywhere near as much contact with my parents as I used to I miss them like mad I worry about my mum I worry about my dad but again I have to temper that with being sensible and reasonable and everything else with, with COVID-19. So um, I have to come over to uh, Tidder and Turn a few days a week anyway because someone has to check the sheep. And Dad's got a puncture on his um, Kubota mule, which he's not in any hurry to fix because he's ordered himself a new one with doors. Because like he said, his old mule... Um, he can't take the dog because Squeak, bless her heart, just wants to go and make friends with everybody or chase something or bark at something. He can't, he can't take the dog with him. So his, his kabuto has got a flat tire. He hasn't bothered repairing it, which means the only way he can go down and look at the sheep is in his Land Rover. Um, it's a lot of work for him to get in and out of that opening gates. So it's the case if he goes there and looks at the sheep and if he can see them from the road, that's fine. But if he can't, that's as good as it gets. So I have to go three or four times a week myself and actually physically go look out. Ooh, uh, any cyclists. That actually wasn't the cyclist's fault. I made a decision to go. Tell a guy it was coming quite quick. It was either a chance of jam the anchors on put my dog in the bag with my dad's dinner or, or go for it I went for the latter right so I'm going to drop dad's dinner off and then we're going to go and look at some sheep don't get too excited okay <laughs> hey, could you smell the old man's gravy is that what it is you'll get fed in about an hour and a half. Hour and three. Can you not wait that long? Is what you're saying? You can't be hungry. You had a bit of my crack at dinner time anyway. Right, that's Dad's dinner delivered. He's all right. Now it's just a case of go and look at some sheep. Well, they seem okay. Let's get them walking. They're actually quite clean. Um, obviously, as a farmer, we look after our sheep, we look after our own stock, but we always, and those of you who are in the same business will know, you always cast your eye over other folks' 
animals and you subconsciously sometimes and sometimes not make a comparison with the condition of your sheep or cattle to somebody else's yeah none of them are lame so considering that they haven't been wormed once once they've been wormed um, and that was well they were they were young <laughs> they were only a couple of months old they've only been wormed once nothing is runny everything is solid you know we're not finding any piles of sloppy nasty stuff so if that's the case they don't they don't need worming so and that's how i like it i don't want to go chucking chemicals into livestock if you don't need to so they're quite happy right we're going to take a little peer over the hedge over there and just see what the corn's like from grain level come on you go on they're coming back now Was that you got brave because we left the field? Yeah. Anyway, that's breeding use for next year. We decided not to put around till this year. We wait till next year. That's the footpath that runs through this field, which it appears most people are staying on. So, which I'm grateful for. I've been looking at um, news reports, Farmers Weekly, um, national news, and in local newspapers. A lot of farmers are having issues right now because there's so many more people using the footpaths to go out and get their constitutional daily exercise. Uh, a lot more um, foot traffic across agricultural land and a lot of the folks don't understand the damage potential that they can be doing. And it's just ignorance, they just don't understand it. So because the footpath um, one report I said uh, minimum width of a footpath is 2.5 metres. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that's actually a bridal path, not a footpath. Um, I was always told a footpath was four foot wide, and that's wide enough for four blokes to carry a coffin. Uh, there was no need to have footpaths two and a half metres wide. And in fact, when footpaths were designed, there was no such thing as metres. Metric wasn't involved, wasn't even invented. So. So yeah, so that's the way I look at it, a public footpath is four foot wide, bridle path, two and a half metres, a bit more like it. Anyway, some of the farmers, uh, the footpaths across farmers' fields of wheat or barley, whatever, um, there was a photograph in something, it was like 50, 60 feet of field was completely decimated by people walking. I think the path had started out as four foot, but got muddy, so it just got wider and wider and wider. Um, that guy could have lost hundreds, maybe even thousands of pounds in lost crop, just so folks can have their daily walk. Who remembers this place from last year? This was the site of our fountain. Um, there's a big old water main underneath here that feeds, um, I thought it fed part of Bristol, but apparently it goes down and feeds part of, um, I think it's Winterbourne, Frampton, Cottrell, basically that direction. So, but we had a fountain here for a week. Uh, there is a couple of videos on that. So if you're interested in seeing what a big old water main looks like when it's burst in the middle of the field, I'll put a card up and uh, you can go back and find, I think there's two or three videos on the subject, to be honest. Uh, yeah, that made a mess. Didn't do this piece of the field any good either. But uh, the one bit of good news is, um, last year we planted that little six acre piece out there to wheat, to first wheat, and pretty much the entire crop failed. It got drowned. This year, although Reg has made a bit of a mark out there with a sprayer, I think he did say it was a bit of a slalom course out there. This year, it is at least, well, green. That's six acres more than we made last year. 
And this is, well, yeah, it is green. Um. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. I don't know what Reg sprayed it with a while ago. He put something on it. Uh, but I can't remember what it was. Some of you can probably guess because you do more corn than I do. Sorry, wheat. I've got to stop saying corn. It's upsetting my American friends because their idea of corn and ours is different. I should say wheat or barley or whatever it is. This is, <clears throat> I suppose that out there will be first wheat and this out here will be second wheat. If that makes sense. Uh, next year, this will be beans, or oilseed rape, or whatever it is we decide to put in the ground. But it won't be wheat. You can go over there. Yeah, okay. See? A farmer would never put that up like that, would you? Hey, would you? If that was me, I'd put the top rail on for us, a contextual post together, then put the wire on, and then put these over the top. But that's just the way I would do it. Okay, it is time. Coming at two o'clock. Time to go home. I've got some jobs to do.